2016. So as you guys are well aware that only eight members can get to vote tonight. Okay. So I'd like to call this meeting to order. Uh, has everybody had a chance to review the agenda? Did everybody get the agenda? Okay. Is there any uh, changes? Anybody wants to make to the agenda? If not, can I get a motion to accept the agenda? <coughs> Max Warren, second it. Martin? Yep. All in favor? Carried. Uh, we'll move on to number three, review minutes from 20. 19 a.m. So our last meeting was October 24, 2019, 6 p.m. Same place. I'm not going to go to everybody that was in attendance. Uh, one, call to order at 6 10 p.m. by President Jerry Morin. Two, review agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Moved by Shirley Bell Morin, seconded by Fred Morin. All in favor. Number three, review minutes of last AGM. Motion to approve minutes of last AGM, October 22nd, 2018. Moved by Max Morin. And seconded by Martin Morin. And all in favor. Number four, business arising from last AGM. There was none. Number five, board reports. President Jerry Moore, Meeting Society Lawyer Review and Decision on Travel Orders Lease. 5.2, Vice President Ron Burnoff. Haven't heard back from Sturm. Uh, emphasis that, emphasize that it's best to walk in the Sturm office to talk to them. Thanks everyone for coming. It's really good to see the support above and beyond. 5.3, Directors, Rick Liberty. Reported from Northern Saskatchewan Traffic Association Convention, April 2019, Rick informed the NSPA gathering that in light of changes to the Crown Lands Act, the concept of regional government needs to be revisited. There are no rural municipalities in the north, and yet that's who the provincial government gives funding to. Why do we use our firm laws as municipalities and allow the government to fund us that way? We need all Northerners to come together, and this would be one way to organize that. Rick said he talked to NSDA President Chairman Barry Carrier about the possibility of holding the annual traffic gathering at South Bay Campground to discuss this idea on land, and he was favorable to the idea. Northern Corridor is advancing as we speak, and we will take all our resources, resources to benefit everyone but us. The North will be turned into an industrialized region, and instead of a weekend week out schedules, workers workers formed to this area will be coming to live in the north. Within 20 years, Fort McMurray is expected to expand to 1 million people. Unless we negotiate our place in this development, we will be overrun and left behind. 5.4, Secretary Treasurer Debbie Manhalik's financial report. It's a pass, the balance from then was 1,000, $39.42. Motion to approve October 23rd financial report as presented. Moved by Martin Moore, seconded by Max Moore. And all in favor. Guest speaker was Glenn McCallum, Meeting Nation Saskatchewan President. Strict membership utilizing existing MNS government structure to lobby for rights. MNS will be engaging constitutionally with different meeting groups, example children and family regarding changes. MNS is on the verge of signing a memorandum of understanding with SAS party regarding harvesting rights. Jerry Moran asked if the MAU with the provincial government is public knowledge yet, yet, and Glenn replied no. But he will ask the legal team if they can share prior to the ceremony, which will be held November 23rd and 24th. And said to send someone from our local. Jerry asked if N12 would receive an invitation. Glenn replied that the presidents of the local are all automatically, automatically invited. Jerry asked if the MAU has anything to do with traditional resource use, leases, and harvesting. 
Rick asked Glenn if he would be appropriate, if it would be appropriate for our traveling associates to engage with the Northwest Meat Council. Glenn replied yes, and asked NWMC Regional Director to put you on the agenda. Jerry asked if the recent Northwest lands claims are in this MO, MOU. Glenn replied no. The final mm -hmm. template will be presented to the region to fill in the pieces. Number seven, membership. Nominations must be member to vote. 2019 membership fee was $10 and those, all those in attendance paid, excluding first time trappers applicants. Positions open, president, vice president, two directors, and secretary treasurer. Motion to open floor for nominations, moved by Shirley Belmore, seconded by Rick LaLiberty, all in favor. Directors, Rick LaLiberty nominate Jason Bottrell, accepts. Ron Burnup nominate Jose Alco, declines. Jose Alco nominates Keith Hustler, declines. Shirley Delmore nominates Jimmy Halix, accepts as uh, secretary treasurer. Vice President uh, nominations, Keith Butler nominates Ron Burnup, accepts. Jose Alco nominates Matt Moran, declines. Shirley Belmore nominates Jerry Moran, declines. President Rick Liberty nominates Jerry Moran, accepts. Matt Moran nominates Rick Liberty, declines. Motion to close nominations was moved by Mark Morin, seconded by Roser Elcro, and all in favor. Due to decline nominations, second director position is still open. Position, uh, sorry, motion to reopen court for nomination of director, moved by Ron Burnoff, seconded by Roser Elcro, all in favor. Kyle will liberty nominate Charles Campbell, declined. Roser Elcro nominate Marina Alex, declined. Jason Bottrell nominates Dale Moran and he declines. Mark Moore nominates Billy Campbell, declines. Trey Bell Moore nominates Kyle Butler, he declines. Matt Moore nominates Larry Alcro, declines. Bernard McCallum nominates Trey Bell Moore and accepts. Motion to close nominations, moved by Kyle Liberty, seconded by Rick Liberty. All in favor. Outcome by acclamation, President Jerry Moore entering a second year, a uh, two year term. Vice President, two-year term. Director Jason and Shirley Delmore, two-year terms. Secretary Treasurer, two-year term. Existing Director Travis Liberty, entering second year of two-year term. And so is Rick Lover, one-year term. New applications trapped in her block. George DeRocher, David Roy, Fred Roy, Kyla Liberty, Eddie Morin, Martin Morin, Ralph Campbell and Ryan Campbell. Motion to accept new applicants to trap and end for for a blog. Moved by Rick for Liberty, seconded by Bernard, uh, Bernard McCallum. And uh, Alvin Taylor. Fur prices. Was there Elkrow said we used to get a booklet with a percentage of fur species sales broken down in the fur blog. And asked how can we get that? Derek Yo replied, uh, replied, said that that is still being published, but there is here a lot of time. Jerry Moran asks if CERN can provide the end fall report with this information once the latest version is available. And Jerry replied, yes, it should be ready within the next month. Number 10, new business. Northern Saskatchewan Trapper Association Annual Convention at South Bay. Motion to invite Northern Saskatchewan Trapper Association to hold 2020 annual NSA gathering at South Bay, Canberra. Moved by Mark Moran, seconded by Fred Moran. And it was all in favor. Carries. 10 2 seek representation for meet the local and the Northwest Meeting Council. Motion to engage in 12 meet the local on traditional land used by seeking representation on the Northwest Meeting Council. Moved by Mark Morin, second by Travis of Liberty. All in favor. 10.3 CERM related. Online licensing. Rick of Liberty asked if there is a move by CERM to apply license online. CERM. Sergeant Jerry Gill replied, yes, the applicants in our fur blocks will have to come to our office. License requirements. Jerry Moran asked if you need Kyle to apply for licenses. Jerry Gill replied, no, but the first step is getting approval from fur block. If born after January 1971, applicants need to do a hunter safety test and challenge trappers exam. Applicants born before January 1971 are grandfathered in, but still need to challenge trappers exam. Loss of CERM, uh, front desk staff, Sergeant Jared Yo expressed frustration and regret at the loss of Northern front desk staff at 
police personnel or CIRM officers, connections to the communities. He introduced CIRM officer Zachary Newdorf and uh, whatever. <laughs> has encouraged staffers, community members to drop by the office anytime they have questions or even just for coffee and conversation. <coughs> 10 for renewing trapper's license. People of color ask how to renew trapper's license. Here, one replied. First, see Debbie Milky. Okay. Debbie Mahalik to pay annual block fee and take receipt when at CIRM office to buy your trapper's license. New snares. Mark Moore asked if Envol is going to buy new snares this year. They're discussed with VP Ron and asked for a motion if membership is in favor. Motion to purchase new snares with NFOL funds. Moved by Rosier, seconded by Max Horn. All in favor. Adjourned meeting. Meeting was adjourned at 8.10 p.m. Uh, moved by Markin, seconded by Shuri, and then all in favor. Okay, so business arising from. Uh, we need a motion first. Yeah, we're doing this. We need a motion to accept the minutes of red. I'll make that motion. Ron, is a second there? Fully, third year. All in favor? There you go. Business arising from 2019 AVM minutes. Um, Northern Corridor, if we can get uh, our Trapper's uh, Board of Director, Rick LaLiberty, to give, give us a little bit of an update of uh, what's going on with the uh, Northern Corridor. Rick, you can please. Sure. 2019, oh geez, it's been a while, but the same concern is happening. The Northern Corridor is moving along. This was a, a hearing that was engaged in Isle Cross last week, and it's a public uh, community consultation on how this corridor will impact us and what our needs are if, if this corridor comes. But this is the only hearing they're having in Saskatchewan. So it's very quiet, it's very, uh, very disconcerting, I guess, con you know, because it's nobody's publicly talking about it. But the other impact to this is a week before that, the province dusted off their duty to consult uh, policy. And it's dated 2010. So the Daniels decision with the Métis rights is not, I don't think, is reflected in this policy. So it's not updated to that event. Uh, Ron was there at this meeting. But the other concern with this one is the duty to consult the last page is interest-based engagement, not rights-based. Now, everybody's trying to exercise indigenous rights with all the reality today now, to reassert our in, you know, Aboriginal and indigenous title to, to our way of life. Now they're saying interest-based. So like somebody from Weyburn can be interested in pipelines because they're building a pipeline up here, they'll consult them. So that's the difference between interest-based and rights-based. And the other policy that just came in, just printed it off, is the white paper. Uh, the provincial government is putting out a white paper imposing provincial jurisdiction over federal jurisdiction. So there's a battle between provincial and federal rights. But our federal rights are in the Constitution, so this is another concern. Keep an eye on the white paper and what it impacts our way of life up here. So this Northern Corridor, it may have started in 1968 with this, with, with this concept, but what's happened is the University of Calgary has taken the lead for research. So a lot of it is oil and gas based. So what they're trying to do is from Fort McMurray, build a pipeline all the way to Labrador. And then also east, also north, and also back up into Churchill, Manitoba. They're using greenhouse and climate change as you know, what's going to change it? The big thing is climate change is going to be refugees. Climate change refugees, it's flooding in the islands. It's flooding all over the place. There's burning, uh, you know, as we speak with 
with fires all over the place down south because of the droughts, people are going to move up north. So the reality is we've got to plan. Regional planning is going to be critical. So one of the suggestions we'd like to make is N14 is working on a, a program called Indigenous Protection Conservation Area. So something to consider is maybe partner up or invite N14 to come and uh, disclose what they have there. It's, uh, it's young people protecting the environment, the caribou habitats, all being conscious of the Oganmehtsigiok. Uh, in, in our word, is say We look at the conservation officers as the keepers of the, of the land. But because of indigenous title and because of our way of life, we have to step up and do the same. Uh, the resource officers have switched their role a bit to Smagan Sagiwa. You're now Smagan Sak, it means you're keepers of the law. So it's not only keepers of the land, you're also keeping of the law. So the keeping of the land part, maybe young, a lot of our young people can enter into that world now. So I think that's what Ella Cross is doing. So maybe partnering our two fur blocks, maybe could be a start, Jerry. So the end the corridor is going to be a part of that because there's going to be consultations so the more people can know about it and talk about it I think N12 and N14 would be a good place to start talking with Alacross and Bogat. Thank you. Thank you Rick. Uh, with that let's move on to board reports here. Uh, uh, Ron do you have anything to report on your, on your side? Not a whole lot. Uh, just a nice, nice summer, nice fall. And I came up with, uh, you guys all got this hand out? That is um, traffic prices that you for today's for, uh, market forecast. It's just, uh, it, it's what they're thinking is going to be happening with the, with the, uh, for, with the fur prices. I see in here that the uh, items have gone down a bit. Uh, viewers are up a bit. Especially the beaver caster is up to uh, $100 a pound. Is that the most recent? No, this is different. This is not just the forecast. But this is a recent one here. 2022 to 2023 per week. That's about it. Any other questions for me? Thanks, Ron. Um, Jason, anything you want to add? Um, I did have a question from, from Rose there you wanted me to bring up. Um, Good luck correspondence here from Rose there. Yeah, maybe I'll... Someone you're talking no, it, it's, it should have been included there, I believe, is what he said. He had phoned me. Okay. It was... Uh, he, he wants to know what the difference between a land lease and a water lease? Like if a person has a rice lease or lake lease, is there a reason why a cabin land lease would be denied? Well, it, it all falls under the traditional use, uh, resource users now, it's a TRU. It's mm -hmm. not trapper's lease anymore. It's a traditional resource users. Yes. Yeah. Which includes everything. Which includes your wild rice. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Wild rice. Those trappers, uh, commercial fishermen, right? So maybe and wild rice. I'm not best sure. he could probably do is wild rice is a different question. Just the land users. Well, even uh, logging, right? Yeah. Logging. Logging. Traditional land use. Yeah. Oh, any any type of traditional. Firewood. Firewood, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. yeah. Probably. Cutting logs. <laughs> 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 I thought you meant a fellow bunch here. Yeah. If 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 you guys want to know what a traditional users uh, resource users falls under, you'll have to have that uh, definition. I don't know if you guys do, but I think you'll have to have it. In Middle East. So when he's, uh, his number is under the phone book, so it's not hard to find. So it's just one general permit, but it's defined. That's correct. It's, it's defined. TRU. No. Yeah. 
Donated to the village? No, we uh, they were donated to our uh, our committee, our uh, COVID committee. Okay, that's that's who we, has we, ownership of it. We still have it. Yeah. If anybody's ever feeling short of breath, <laughs> <laughs> I know what they're thinking. About. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. <laughs> Number six here, a uh, letter from N12 member Rosaire Elkro, which is this one here. I'll read it to you guys. Uh, I would like to know the purpose of having an N12 Trappers Board. What is their role and responsibilities? Last year, Mystic was logging close to my trap line, my trap line was destroyed, and my snares, traps, that I left hanging in trees were lost. I thought there was a rule that they could not log within a kilometer of cabins or trap lines. 
My trap line was once my grandfather's trap line and passed down to my father and down to me. So when there will be no trap lines to pass down to our future generation. We are losing our ability to harvest medicine from the trees and forests and spruce gum must take tea and chaga. Logging is ruining our culture uh, and our way of life. Going forward, we should be informed before logging takes place in our curve log. Here are our, near our cabins, trap lines, and medicine. There is also need to, there needs to be people on this. Oh, this needs to be people on this board that cares about our culture, our land, and our people. Thank you, Rosario Alto. Sarah, a little hard to read, but we got through it. <coughs> Okay, so that's the correspondence. That's just a concern from one of our trappers there. And that can be dealt with with the new board that comes in later. So we'll just table that to their next meeting. This one and also the Tacoma and North, it will be addressed there. And if anybody has any questions about this, hang on. If anybody has any questions about this, uh, we probably won't deal with that tonight. But the new board and also the Tacoma and board deals with these kind of Concerns. Okay. Uh, what, uh, you had a question? Yeah, no, I was just going to add because you just said that we're not have language, so I grew up here. Um, I'm originally from Bobel. I grew up here. Um, just going on what Rosario uh, Alto said, because I'm just, I'm new um, back into my community and I'm trying to understand a lot of things that are happening within the community. And I think this is a really good example like, as into what's happening to the land and the resources. So I guess my new question to the board going forward, and I don't know if this is something that is happening now, or this is something that we need to incorporate, because um, like coming in here, like I see some maps, but I don't know exactly where N12 is, but I do know my mushroom who had some, a trap line who is from Bobel is, could be affected by this area. So I was wondering, like, are we doing any data collection on, you know, the resources that we have, where these trap lines are, and this boundary with this one kilometer that you mentioned, public cabins and trap lines. If not, then I think this is something that the board really needs to consider going forward because this data, data is so essential because that information, information allows us to, to determine how we're gonna manage our resources and what's impacting them at that particular time. So data is definitely a helping going forward that I think Thank you, uh, and uh, to address your uh, concern a little bit more about data, yeah, we've been keeping data, we've been keeping close contacts with Mystic, the logging outfit that uh, logging in our, her block, and we've had a close, uh, pretty close working relationship with Mystic, and they usually have a lot of respect for the trapping the trappers. If we request that they keep away from a certain area, they usually respect that wish. So if anybody has any concerns, anything that you want to bring up uh, regarding logging, Mystic, by all means, don't hold back. Let us know, and we'll try our best to deal with that concern as soon as possible. Mystic, is, like I said, Mystic has been pretty good dealing with the concerns. If you keep, tell them to keep away one kilometer away from a lake or a cabin, they'll, they'll respect that. But we need to we need to we need to work together with with the logging company because they're not going away. The government will not make them go away. Just like that. You can bet on that. So we have to try and uh, work together. Like I said, they've been pretty respectful of what what uh, what's your question? Um, about the um, notification of when they're coming in to clear land and all that or take their logging. Ron, we get letters to you, to me, as trappers. Everybody else must be getting those letters. They send out a little map showing what they're going to be doing over the next 
Mm-hmm. One, two, three, four years. Everybody should be getting that. If it shows that it's affecting your land where you're trapping, that's your responsibility, is it not? To contact them and say, here's my trapping area or my cabin. I don't think they, I don't think they share this knowledge with uh, the trappers, uh, the trappers, uh, cabin owners and stuff like that. Well, why they, am I getting they, one then? That's uh, Saga Ski, that's uh, Big River, Toko. I got a few letters from that. Those guys do that. Always yeah. come from Mystic, does it not? Some come from Mystic. The official no. notification no. letters come from the government. It's, it's the government's duty to consult, not not the companies. But they must, the, the Saga they must like individually know you guys and they're, yeah, they're, yeah, they're being that, respectful that was, to those that was those given owners to them from that they know. our trappers meeting I think one time. Yeah. So, so like I they're, said, having, they're yeah. having a meeting here in Dory Lake, I think I'm not too sure when. That's they're, coming up pretty quick. That's coming up yeah. pretty quick, but you know that, that that's what concerns me. They will come here to a duty to consult yeah. in, in both Albert. And, so, we and brought, they're coming from the ass end of Dory we Lake. Is concern up. We 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 had our local uh, our local here write letters to them saying why are you guys having uh, this is our fur block why are you guys having meetings over there why are you not comfortable about this is this is our fur block that they're dealing with but we haven't had much success with that but we're not giving up we're still dealing with that is that the carrier Pardon? is that the carrier well there's Sakawaski is uh, there's six six logging companies all together it's Montreal Lake First Nations uh, North Sass, the Rons is in there. Uh, I forget who else. Bigger six yeah. So carriers separate than you? No carriers part of that. Yeah. yeah. And then and then they've also got this one over here. This is this carrier over here. Pine Knowledge been here in Pine Knowledge. That's all carrier. There's, there's one towards Kennel Lake too. They, I seen them yesterday. That'd be missed yeah. yeah. One thing I'd like to bring up too, because I know, um, like I think one time I remember that Sakowski did come to Bluebell, and they had a thing at the uh, BDI, and I encourage people like do not go to those things because they get you to sign a paper. If you sign your name, they take that back to the government and say, okay, these people agree to that we log in their fur ball. We did our consultation. Yeah. That's what they did. And that's what they did. So you have to be careful when you go to those public Sakowski you know, meetings. Mm-hmm. Ron, you and I went to that. They had maps all over the place showing us. That's there was a whole five people call? there. That was at the town office or somewhere over there. Yeah. That was a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, Sakowski, then, eh? Was that carrier? It was carrier. They were both here. So I was key and carrier were here. The carrier is the one that had a lot of stuff. Yeah. They finally pulled their wood out of there up there for years, so <laughs> kind of looks clean there now. Up there. But now towards Pine House, it looks messier now because yeah. they got a lot of waste in there. So what happened to our moratorium? I thought we had one. It's like freaking a jack fish in a Catfish and a pail of snot, my dad used to say, you can't catch one and when you say something, they blame it on each other. If you talk to carrier, they'll say it's not us, it's, it's mystic, so it's pretty tough to know. Well, Alice has been saying for years, there's, are they still cutting? Like, I don't know. You, can blame, you, you, can you can't blame the logging companies, too. It's, it's the government that issues these permits to them, eh? It's the government. It's not the logging companies. They, they, have, they put applications into the government and the government allows it. concerns to lots of times and we're not giving up we're 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 still fighting so i think going back to what i just said earlier about collecting that data because a lot of times right now even in even just sitting at the top we, we talk about all these concerns we have but we don't have that data to back us up if we build that data that we need to understand our traditional land use area what the animals and what is being affected in in, in these areas what type of industries in there, what they're taking, 
you know, that information says a lot and it's going to help us dictate what those policies and procedures are going to go because climate change is a big thing that's happening and we're going to be impacted. So if we can go in as a collaborative to discuss these things, but from our concerns backed up with that data, that scientific data. Okay, so we we will move on to uh, number seven. Uh, I'm going to give the floor over to our uh, two officers over here, Trump. Uh, if you have any questions and answers, or if you guys want to have a little presentation, uh, introduce yourselves. I don't think there's many people here that know you guys, so uh, go ahead. Thank you. So for those of you who don't know, I'm Colton Perkins. I'm the Sergeant for the Bulldog Compliance Area. I've been up here for a year and a half now, I believe. Um, for those that don't know, this is Jeremy Lyon. Um, he joined us here in January. So so if you guys have questions, concerns, anything that you'd like to ask? How many of you guys uh, stationed here? We actually currently have, uh, we have another sergeant that's working on a bull valve that looks after Buffalo Narrows. Uh, Kyle Rothheller is still an inspector up here. And then we have uh, Mackenzie Fisher that just joined us here uh, beginning of October. So, so we're fairly well staffed right now. So. Yep. Any questions, guys? Some of us are, in the old days, it was FACs, now yep. it's Valley. Yep. Some of, some of us have expired and some of us don't have it. I retired from the RCMP and I, uh, I couldn't find the number I had in the database in Ottawa, so I, I'm going to have to take a, a course. So I need that. But now, for hunting and trapping, if we're out there hunting and trapping, you need a pal if you have a firearm with you. Technically, by law of the law, yes. We generally don't go asking for them. So, uh -huh. But technically, to be in possession of a firearm, you need to have a possession acquisition license uh -huh. or be with somebody that does. Yeah. That's if you're, if you're with somebody that has one, it's... Yeah, if they're willing to yeah. assume responsibility for that mm -hmm. firearm, then you're covered off there. You gotta have a pal with you. <laughs> a pal with a pal. Yeah. There's no grandfather in you. Like if you have a you have license with you, you take a gun for protection from. Not when it comes to possession of the firearms. That's more of a federal matter. We're not a more provincial, so I think somebody just go to the RCMP inquire about. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there's any courses coming up. If anybody's going to be setting them up, do you guys set them up? We don't do that. I know, I think there's a gentleman in Buffalo Narrows that does. Uh, Daryl Ross. I have one on November 26th and 27th, but it comes up real fast. I'm going to ask for a second in before the beginning of December. Right on. Okay. Thank you. What is that for? FAC? Yeah. Fire uh, yeah. Can you offer that in the lab? Yeah, Daryl comes here. Okay. Okay, perfect. So you don't have your watch. I'm in Terry we will also pick another date. I have a quick question. Um, say, say if a person wrote that exam and then he passed it and, and all, but he never did pay for it, would that have some expiry on it? Or the would, exam itself? Yeah. There's no fee for the exam. It's free of charge. Yeah. Like, say the guy did it in the class, but he never paid that $60. I'm not sure what that sixty dollars is. Sixty dollars? Yeah. What is that? Fire. Oh, for the pal. Sorry. Your, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, once once you've passed your pal, it's good for forever. So it would stay in database whether or not you paid for that. Uh, you, there was sixty dollars fee on that. Yeah. yeah. So I never paid for it. Okay, you know I, I mean? that would be through your instructor or whoever you took it through. I can't speak to that whether they sent you paperwork away with no paper or not. The same months. thing happened to me. <laughs> they give you the papers and they yeah, yeah. have to send it away. Yeah, yeah. I, I never <laughs> sent it away. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you think? Yeah, well, if you, if you guys would have it. We don't keep, that's a federal record for, mm -hmm. for your pal. Yeah, yeah. So whoever mm -hmm. took, mm -hmm. or whoever issued the course would have a record yeah, sheet. Numbers, right. And they'd have your test and everything that has to get sent to yeah. the federal yeah. government. Yeah. Um, so it's, I'm not sure if they'd send it without getting their, their money for delivering the course. Yeah. Do you keep a database for the humane trapping test? Yep. 
Okay. I took that one at the convention in Laurel years ago. Yeah, so it'll show up on our system and you have that. Currently, right now, it's a low risk. Uh, Alberta has Yeah, that's what we're looking at. That's what they have. They show up to us. The executive is like it was very low risk. That means that we still have to The biggest concern right now is that zebra mussel. Okay. So. And there's no invasive ones? No. Okay. There, there's no, no zebra mussels that we know of yet in Saskatchewan. They've been on the water in the project where they are checking every year. They have several travel locations set up in water bottles. And so knock on wood, there's not yet. And those, uh, those come from salt water, right? No, no. fresh water. No, fresh water. Fresh water. Mm -hmm. And the and, and, and the United States. Yeah, they're involved with the the border, they have yeah, avoid them. Uh, yeah. So make sure you're transporting a What set of cold lakers are you going to have a picture in there? Is that So if you're going to drive a boat, you're going to have to go to the water. You should ask them if it's. So within the dream that you guys oversee, is that something that you guys can provide more information on? Yeah. Closer to us than you think? Yeah, for sure. If that's something that there's some interest in. Um, they're taking samples. Yeah, people are going to submit it. They're going to submit it. They're going to take the pictures. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Just on Doug. Uh, Chronic wasting disease, anything okay. impacting our region on the moose or deer? So with that, um, I encourage you all as hunters, if you're out hunting and you get an animal, it's hard to know where, where the levels are at, especially up in this area. We haven't had any cases up in this area that we know of yet. We do not really get any heads submitted to get sent away for testing for chronic wasting disease. I got one outside here. Well, if it's, if it's fresh, we'll take it. Oh, yeah. So if you don't want it, yeah, we can take it, get it away for testing. Because without getting those tests, without having the heads to test, we don't know if really what's what's going on. So we didn't get any heads last year. We didn't get any the year before that. So if you harvested a moose or a deer or anything, by all means, drop by the office. We'll, we'll send the head away for testing. And that we went, they'll drop it off there. Okay. In the or if you want that, we can take it here. Oh, yeah, for sure. So whatever works for you. No, I'm good. It's Fincher compliance with the main road for the game preserves or if we're having an animal shot and that, that kind of stuff. So. Does that kind of answer your question? Or? Yeah, if it's standing by the power pole, then don't you? Anything else, guys? Any more questions? Yeah, I do. Debbie?
this name, that's not okay. Oh, crazy. Uh, telling the person on their name that, that's really quite uh, disrespectful. I, mean, I don't know who it was, and uh, I, don't, I don't even want to know. But uh, just on behalf of the trial group here, like, we, we would like to work together. And, uh, so just encourage you to always type in the name of the children. Oh, thank you. I was one of them that got stopped. <laughs> I don't recognize you, so it was before our time. <laughs> don't stop him again. The lad is not Do a quick sleep check. It. We don't have those fancy computers, so. That's I guess the one thing I will ask from our end is, is when we are stopping vehicles, we don't know who we're stopping until we basically get to the middle of the field. Um, so. It's safe to know good anyway that it's something that's stolen. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. we don't have all that fancy technology yet of automatic license plate readers that tell us yeah. who the vehicle belongs to and all that stuff. So I know I talked to a few miners earlier on. And I said, well, I'm, to be honest, when I stopped you, I had no idea who you were. I didn't know mm -hmm. if you were from Saskatoon, from wherever. We had a nice chat, or a nice chat. Stop them on their way. We're all there kind of trying to do the same job that you guys are doing is protect the natural resources and ensure that there's sustainable harvest for future generations. Who's uh, responsible? Because we've been like, going in different trails and stuff, and there's so much garbage out there. Like, it's so sad to see that people dump in their garbage, like, even they. Like they have done, they leave their name of lost people, for example. Like, I think they need to be accountable to dumping. Yeah, so that's something we've, we've been working on, and I hate to say it, unfortunately, it doesn't. Uh, so we've been going through uh, lots of dump sites that we find, and we'll go through garbage. It's not a glorious job picking through somebody's garbage and looking for any identifying documents. Mm -hmm. And we follow up with that file. I had one this spring at the airport here where there was five or 15 bags of garbage that were dumped. And Figure out who it was, and they end up going clean it up. So we try and work with that and see if we get it cleaned up and go that way. Do yeah. they give a time? Depends on the situation. Oh, okay. so, but yes, there's something that you can be fined for, and the fine is not cheap. What about those guys at the airport? There, do you get ticketed? Which guys at the airport? The, with the garbage that dumped at the airport. I won't speak of the specific cases, but because that was a real mess. I can tell you, I can tell you, they did a heck of a job cleaning it up, though. Yeah. So they picked up about twenty bags of garbage, which is a lot more than the month. So. Well, a lot of it. Good, uh, good to hear. A lot of it is due to the uh, locking of the local landfills, though. Yeah. There's no well, place for them to dump. They go find a place. Yeah, the one I understand that. And we, for people that have lived in the north, one of our the big concerns is the landfills getting started on fire. Um, Bull Valley has been awesome. We haven't had any issues. And that kind of stuff. So, because when that landfill starts on fire, there's a bit proximity to town, those harmful chemicals and stuff that are in all that garbage. So, that's part of the reason for walking that landfill is to ensure that, that after hours of access, and after somebody might go in there and try and light it on fire or do something like that, it is minimized a little bit. So. And part of their permit condition is they have to have staff there when the landfill is open to ensure that the waste has been properly disposed of in the appropriate places. So. Unfortunately, this, the village doesn't have the staff and the manpower to staff it all the time. So, but I'd say the village does do a pretty good job of cleaning up the garbage and picking it up in town. So, excuse me. I was just going to clarify there was a case uh, on the Pine House Road, which is not a corridor. There was a moose shot by an elder. Okay. And while he was dressing it, the resource officer came to charge him. Not because of shooting in a corridor, but because he found a shell casing beside the road and charged, proceeded to charge him for unsafe use of the firearm. He's dressing the moose on the side of the road. He's, he's shooting it. So, you know, is that another way of charging us? Well, you know, the I, corridor I, can't, is... I can't speak to that. I'm, I'm not aware of that file. I'm guessing it's several years ago. Yeah, it was several years so ago, I, but I, it, I can't speak to that. I don't know the circumstances of that. If there was a witness that saw something and reported something, I, I no, I, I was there. I was the. I was. I was helping yeah. dress the moose, and the shell casing just happened to be on the side of the road. But that's what the resource officer interpreted the situation, saying it's unsafe because of where the shell casing was. So just 
you may have a corridor like Pine House that you yep. can hunt on, yep. but where that shell casing is found, it just deteriorated this person's self self worth, so, I guess. Uh, and I can tell you from my experience, that wouldn't, in my opinion, I wouldn't be proceeding um, in a charge with that matter. There'd be some more investigative work that needs to be done. But like I said, with all, I'm not aware of that file. I can't speak to the circumstances or, or the ultimate Use this discretion there. Yeah. So, so, so what is the proper way to shoot off a corridor, a non corridor? So, so you can't shoot a water across the road. So basically, if you're in the ditch, you're good. And you're not shooting across the road mm. or along it. So basically, if you're, you step into the ditch and you got the bush and you shoot into the bush, you should be good as long as there's no houses or anything that's back there within that 500 meters. And you need to be sure you're targeting beyond. And and yeah, as long as you're not in a real corner. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, thank you. Um, if there's no more questions, guys. Uh, I just wonder if the stain from the end of the movie. Because I'd like them to be here for the cabinet security discussion. Sure, yeah, we can say. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, uh, the next one is. Uh, for nominations, but I'm going to skip that one till the end. Let's move on to uh, number nine. Uh, you guys want to take a little break, or you want to keep going? No break. All right, take a little five minutes. Over here. Grab some water. Eleven point one cabin security. Any more ideas? I think besides trail cams, I think trail cams is a good idea. Okay, so this next one here is 11.2, end fall bylaw for legible applicants. It should be revised to include those who grew up in Bogal and had to move due to work. Uh, so we, these are the younger fellows that moved away, went to school somewhere else, out, uh, in the cities and stuff like that, that are, they don't live here no more, but they, they want to have uh, some trapping rights here within our end fall for a block. Uh, like I said, it's up to you guys. Whatever you want to do, we can include them uh, within our end offer block that have given trapping rights, or they have to live here. Uh, it, it's up to you guys. Max? I'll make that motion. To accept? I'll make that motion. A motion to, for what? To, to accept? Uh, to accept, uh, yeah, to accept. Because if they go away for school or to work somewhere, this is where they were born, and chances are they'll come back, and if they're applying for a trapper's license here, then they definitely are going to come back. I think that applies to me. I was talking about you, yeah. I was looking at your, uh, uh, looking at your bunny hug. Yeah, you look in the middle. I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a motion has been put forward. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna. Rick, um, I'll second it. Uh, Rick seconded. Seconded by Rick. Okay. All in favor? All in favor? Carry. Thank you. So the second one, the second one is to amend the bylaw. Okay. Uh, Martin made that motion. I need a seconder. I'll second. Jason, seconder. All in favor? And that one is carried also. <coughs> hey, 
Are you guys listening back there? Yeah. You got it? Oh you got it? You got the second one also? Yeah. Those to be uh, also to the ones that are opposed to it. Opposed? For the first motion. Opposed? One. Are you thinning your ears or are you holding your hand up? <laughs> and the second one, the second motion to amend the bylaw. Opposed? Zero. One. One opposed. Okay. So it looks like. Uh, these two motions are uh, carried. 11.3, new trapper's manual. How many manuals do we have, Debbie? We have uh, three of the new ones, and they're all out right now, uh, so I can, make, I can make more. Okay, so guys, we need these, these manuals back. If you guys are borrowing these manuals, we need them back, please, once you're done, we're done. Yeah, I have, I have a sticker I put on them that gives them one month. So, just, I think there's a little bit of confusion here on the new trapper's uh, uh, application. So, the process is, you fill out the application, right? Once it's approved, once it's approved, you write your trapper's exam, right? Go to the CERM office, see Gwen or whoever is over there, write your trapper's exam. Once you've passed that, go get, pay your block fee. Once you got your block fee, go get your license at CERN, and then you're good to go. go that's the process that's being followed. There's a question on there that asks if you have your trapper's uh, exam. On here? Yeah. yeah. So you can actually take the exam before you go on it. You can go, yeah. you can, you can go either way, yeah. It, they're so close together, these two here. But hand you, hand you, have to, you have to get them both in anyway. a Okay, so we, the bylaw states <coughs> if you have three signatures, board signatures here, that's approved, or you can get voted in at AGM. Either or. That make sense? <coughs> so it's either or. It doesn't have to be both. But once you get three signatures, you're approved. And the new, if somebody fills out a new one here tonight, we can vote. Them in also. That makes sense? <coughs> Jerry. No. Wait. Jerry. He's, he's applying for a doctor's license. Peter? Peter. Can he be grandfathered? Does he have to write the exam? No, he's got to write the exam. So then, no. <laughs> Everybody's got to write the exam. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody writes the exam. <laughs> but that's why we have, Peter, that's why we have Trapper's manuals there. So you guys can borrow those and study. Every, everything that's on the Trapper's exam is in there. And the good news is it's not only not 50 questions anymore, it's only 40. <laughs> but it's a new manual, so. Martin? Martin? He got a uh, three signature in his application. Yeah. So that means he is? He's in. Okay. I have a uh, question for the servant. Are these manuals available online? You can Google it and find a manual. It's not the exact manual, but it's got some of the same information. Well, so the manuals, there's a fee for the manuals. So the trackers, firm watch bought the manuals. Uh, right, they're twenty dollars a piece. So the the ones online, I'm not sure who's published them. 
We just got to make sure whatever's on the manual here is, uh, is on the exam. Yeah, you can find a lot of different information online. Um, but then the day, the manual is specific to the exam. The manual is for the book as so that's the one I follow. Um, what you find online might not be true. So. What is a passing mark for having a passing mark? Is it 75 or 80? 75. 75, yeah. Thank you. Okay, sure you <laughs> <laughs> you just barely got to the same day? No, no, no. I don't. Same day? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs>